Hey, 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 hey. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another exciting, head-scratching episode of Insane Disappearances. Tonight, I got a new story for you that I'm just hearing about. I think it may... It, it, this just happened. And then I'm going to get into some other stuff. But I'm going to actually get into the other stuff first. You know, like, starting off with... Um, has anybody heard about what happened at the Sunspot um, uh, Observatory? Sun Observatory. It was probably about the craziest FBI um, case I've ever heard in my life. Because, okay, to start with, apparently, from the new information that I that I looked up, it was something dealing with a child pornography uh, investigation at at the uh, laboratory. Now, before that, they said they were looking for a suspect. So, okay, you, your idea to flush out the suspect was for you to flush everybody out of the town. The town was literally deserted, evacuated, because of this one suspect. First of all, if anything, I'm talking about a person who was watching child porn at a laboratory. So, think about it. Does that cause you to evacuate an entire town? I'm just saying. If it's a child pornography case, you probably don't even need, well, you would need the FBI and then in law enforcement, but you don't need to evacuate, evacuate an entire town for something like that. I've heard of other child pornography cases that were you know, flushed out, you know, and they caught the person, put him in jail. They didn't evacuate the entire town. So, with that being said, is this about that? Could they just be covering it up by saying that's what it was? Yet, you already put it out there that you did something dumb enough to... Okay, they said that they didn't want him to know that they were looking for him. So, you evacuate the entire town... And I'm pretty sure he was somewhere where there was a TV so that he could monitor you guys looking for him. So that would mean at some point he's going to see something on flash on the TV or on the news about the entire town of such and such at the um, Sunspot Laboratory was evacuated. That would let him know that you're looking for him. You evacuated an entire, an entire town just so you could find him. Was he that dangerous of a, uh, of a, a child pornography freak? For you to evacuate an entire town? I don't think so. I'm just saying. Now, like I said, it starts out weird, and then they try to cover it up with a simple everyday case, a child pornography case. Okay, first of all, like I said, you already put yourself out there by doing by talking about that. Then you said a suspect was so dangerous you had to evacuate an entire town. One man can harm an entire town full of people. Man, woman, or child. When ever in your life have you ever heard something so stupid? I mean, really? The FBI? Supposed to be this huge organization that is, I won't say secret, but they keep secrets. Like, you know, Mulder and Scully, F, you know, X-Files. They do have an X-Files. And that's obviously what this is. This is an X file. Because think about it. If you feel like you need to evacuate an entire town, that would mean it was bum 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 dramatic reverb. An alien. You think? I'm just saying. I know that that's not what this channel is all about, but it's some crazy news. And there are certain cases where people who disappear where there's UFO abductions involved, or so they think, because of the nature of their disappearance, where it looks like they were lifted up off the ground. You know, because like you know, like the the young boy that in Australia I talked about months, like maybe a couple, like two years ago, maybe, where he oh Mackenzie, I think it's Jacob Mackenzie, and it on the mountainside next to a waterfall, you could literally see only his feet. The front end of his feet, the shoe, the, the, what, the front end of his shoe, 
pressed into the ground. Like as if he was either on his tippy toes or something lifted him up because he was never found. Never seen again. Never heard from him. This was like back in maybe the 70s, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. I have to go back and check that out. But, like I said, that was a weird You know, there's a lot of crazy stuff going on in, in, you know, in the world today. You know, like that one right there. That was the main thing that I really wanted to talk about because it was strange. And they're looking for an alien or possibly a hybrid. Or some freaky looking, uh, you know, whatever they created and it got loose. You know, I mean, look at that thing that they said that they found on the beach that was coming from that place where, what do they call that? Um, it was a some type of plant that was across the ocean. And they, there was this thing that was on the beach. It looked like it was crossed between um, a sloth, a pig, and maybe a dolphin and a fish. It was the weirdest looking creature i ever seen in my life. One I ain't never seen before. And it washed up on the beach. And it was coming from some laboratory that was all the way on the other side of the ocean. But you could see the steeple, you know, the smoke coming out of you know, billowing out of it. Um, so I, I forgot the name of that area. Because I, I, I wanted to say that ranch that everyone talks about. You know, where all those uh, um, creatures be coming from. You know, but it was not in the desert. It was near a beach area. I, just, I forgot the name of that, that, that place. But anyway... Yeah, weird, weird, weird stuff. Just like, ugh. Just be like, wow. This doesn't make any sense. Why is this so weird? And that's the main question. Why? Some people don't want to know why. Oh, 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 oh. This is another thing. I want to give a special shout out to one of my viewers. She wanted me to give a shout out because uh, this young woman, uh, from what she told me, she knows Freddie Seth Morgan because her friend is his child. So, there's the connection. You know, now, this information is coming from Jazz Unicorn. Okay, that's J-A-Z Unicorn. So, give me a shout out. Hey, how you doing? Thanks for the info. Glad to see you loving my channel. Glad to see everybody loving my channel. Ha, ha, ha. So, like I said, anybody else want me to give me a shout out? I'll do that. You know what I'm saying? You, know, you send me a message saying, you know, give me a shout out. Da, 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 da. You got some information for me. Slide it through, and I will mention you on my channel. That way, you become famous. Yeah, along with all of my viewers. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> but yeah, so big shout out to Jazz Unicorn. You know, thanks for joining my channel. Thanks for uh, hitting me up with that information about you know uh, Seth. Uh, and if there's anybody out there that knows more about this young man, look at now he's not find a child. So you know, it's crazy. But if anybody has any more information, if you're here in ATL, let me know. Let me know something. You know where I'm at. Insane disappearances. Hit me up in the comment section. <gasps> blah, 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 blah. And there it is. Now, we're going to get down to business here. Uh, the young person that I wanted to talk about is a young boy from uh, Leon County, Florida. And this is coming from station WFLA. This is about a young boy, like I said. Not a young young boy. He's about, I think, 19. Yeah, 19. His name is Justin Shields. Uh, the Florida State University student uh, who went missing this week has been found alive after four days, authorities said Sunday. Now, I'm going to get to the weird part after I read a little bit about this young man first here. Now it says here, Justin Shields. 19 disappeared on Wednesday. His car was found abandoned in a wooded area on the outskirts of Tallahassee along... Hold on one second. I hate it when that happens. <laughs> anyway. But, um, so, okay. Now, where was I? I was saying... Oh yeah, Tallahassee along with his cell phone and wallet according to the Tallahassee Democrat. Uh, yeah, Democrat. Now, uh, this weekend, the Leon County Sheriff's Office appealed uh, to public, uh, appealed to the public 
for help in finding shields. About oh wait no, but it's oh okay I read that part right. <laughs> okay now um about three hundred people, including volunteers and law enforcement, joined in the search effort. According to the sheriff's office, a dive team searched creeks and ponds in the area. A SWAT team, helicopter, and FSU's drone team uh, also assisted in the search. On Sunday, canines tracked him down in a wooded area outside of Tallahassee near where his car was found. And uh, this is what the agent was saying. Uh, one of the, um, this is what the agency was saying. Uh, now, as far as we know, he's in decent health, said LCS, LCSO uh, spokesperson Dave, um, spokesman Dave Timms, or Timms. Anyway, uh, now he now he was a little disoriented uh, when he got when he got him, when it, when it, ah, when we got him out. Okay, now uh, so we're just focused on his health right now. And that's probably what the uh, what his parents were saying. Uh, now, a video released uh, by the sheriff's office shows Shields family Shields family members when they discovered he was when they when they discovered he was alive. They can be seen hugging each other and crying out in relief. Uh, let's see. Also, this is the ending part. Um, now, thank you so much for the Leon County Sheriff's Office volunteer. Volunteers, fire department, FSU. I don't know if I'm leaving anybody out, but we found him, and we're all, and we are and we are so grateful. Uh, his mother and uh, Farrar uh, said in another video, so grateful. Excuse me, so grateful for all the prof all the professionals and everybody that gave up their time to find Justin and bring him home to us. I was finally, I, I, was, I was, oh yeah, I was just really happy that we, uh, we finally, we finally found him and the, uh, oh, and that, it, and that it didn't take too long. Shield's roommate, uh, Jacob, uh, Jacob, Jacob Tenley told Tallahassee Democrat, it could have been a lot worse. No further details reg uh, regarding Shields' disappearance has been released at this time. Okay. Now, first of all, that part where they just said that's a total lie. The part that they don't want to tell you was the information that was gathered about his disappearance, some creepy things popped up. And when I say creepy, I mean missing 411 creepy. You know, like the... the, the um, the criteria that David Pilates is always looking for? Well, that was found in all of this. So um it's not on here, so I'm gonna have to actually go to the a uh, form where I got the information from. Uh but I'm gonna have to scroll down a little bit. Okay, this wasn't here before, but now it just popped up. That's weird. Uh I was getting some information from uh, you know, the, the forum about he yeah, had the observatory, but it wasn't there earlier. You know, it, it I couldn't I couldn't select it, so I had to you know just kind of go from memory. You know, and I see that it helps because it was that small of information. But yeah, I want to get to the part about you know the findings after he disappeared, which was very very strange. And you know, it was something dealing with the, you know the whole clothing stick. You know, when it, when when people are found either dead or even alive, you know, because most of the time when they're found dead, you know, they always have, have you know, parts of clothes. Now, this is the part that's really weird. Um, let me get to the part where he was talking about. So basically what they were saying, his wallet and his clothes were found in two different areas that were far away from where he was uh, actually found. And it says right here, according uh, to deputies, Shields was found naked. Uh, uh, this disoriented and was very dehydrated three days after he went missing. But what they were saying also was that uh, his phone and wallet were left in his car on dirt on a dirt road 
in the uh, in the old Magnolia Road area. Deputies say there was no information on his phone since uh, Wednesday when you know, when he was last seen uh, by friends. Now, it was the fact that first of all he was butt naked. Okay. Secondly, his wallet and his keys were in the car. Way, way, way over by where he parked it at. But yeah, you out here, butt naked. Number one, that is the strange part about this whole thing. Why were you naked in the first place? Out there. Yeah, okay, it's still summertime, so it's not that cold. And you see, normally a lot of these cases uh, are centered around the, the winter months. You know, especially in the mountains where it snows a lot. Okay, so it's just doesn't make any sense why was he there and why was he naked what made him take his clothes off in the first place people used to always well I think the coroner's office or whoever they always say oh well the reason why is because it, you know when they um I think they say when you get hot on the inside you want to cool yourself off so you start taking your clothes off especially after you got wet it was, was just one of the you know things about hypothermia you know, you get into a cold water and your body is kind of shutting down with you. Or if you get too hot for whatever reason, you start removing your clothes. That's okay. That still doesn't make any sense. Anyway. But yeah, that, that, that was the, the crazy part. It says right here, um, yeah, cons let me see, uh, team consisting of LSU, Florida. You see, you found she was about half a mile from where his clothes were found. See, that, that's what it was. That's that's the part that I was trying to get at. He was found a half a mile from where his clothes were found. So, somewhere along that line, he felt like he needed to take his clothes off. All of them. Because they say he was naked, literally. I'm talking nothing. Underwear, no socks, nothing. Butt-ass naked. So, why do you take your clothes off? Go away over here, a half a mile from where your clothes were, the way where you placed your clothes, and all of a sudden, you're naked. What makes you do that? Why did you do that? They would always keep saying hypothermia, but they said he was in good health. He didn't have hypothermia. This would be the first time they have never mentioned it. Every single time, one of these cases pop up, and they find the person. They always say, oh, they suffer from hypothermia. Uh, you know, even the people that, that that were found in the water, they say, oh, it was an accidental drowning. Okay, first of all, how did he get in the water in the first place? He was he was nowhere near the water. But yeah, he ended up in the water. It makes no sense. Just like all these people that, these college students, you know, that they were polite to talk about. They go into a party or go into a bar which is the one trail they always follow and they always end up in the river somewhere. And it is a whole book he got on that. Where some guy goes to a bar with his friends from the college that he's actually at and they having a good time, they drinking. All of a sudden, he don't feel well. Which is a common thing and a common criteria when it comes to all these cases. He don't feel well. He's nauseous, so he's going to go home. But that's like, no, nah, I'm going to walk. Every single person who has vanished between point A and point B and got rerouted to a river said that. Every single freaking one. It's like a pattern that seems to always follow every single person that ends up dead that way. Why? I don't know. I do know this, though. <sighs> It's crazy. It's very crazy because I mean, we're talking about people who just all of a sudden get sick and then all of a sudden they want to walk home. Why? Why does every single person who goes through that always want to walk home? First of all, you don't even live close enough for you to even be walking. Why would you want to walk all the way home? Now I'm gonna be honest. When I was growing up in New Jersey, I walked everywhere. I mean, when you grow up north, that's what that's what you do. I, I, I was born and raised in Brooklyn. So we walked everywhere. Unless the bus was taking us somewhere. We walked to the store. We walked to the laundromat. We walked all the way up to the very front of the block. And then went over to another block. Went to this place that was underneath a train track. And got me a fish sandwich. 
and I'm walking past the precinct. Okay, don't know which one it was, that was years ago. But anyway, the whole point is, we walked maybe, I'd say one, three blocks. Three blocks. That's what we did up north in New York. We walked or we took the bus. And of course, everybody had a car too, but my mom at the time didn't have one and my aunt didn't have one. So we were taking the bus or the train, which was cool because it was fun. I like looking outside and watching all the world go by, you know, we on the train and everything. And then we go inside the, the, the tunnel. The one thing about the tunnel, when I was a kid, every time I would see those little, those little colorful lights that would be passing by, for some strange reason, I keep thinking about flavored oatmeal. We know we have the raisins and everything, the little bright colored, like, fruit. Don't ask me why. That was a crazy thing. I was a kid. I was... You know, my mind was always going, <laughs> but I don't know why. It, 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 those the lights always fascinated me. Even when we driving, like let's just say it was raining, right? And it's rain all on the windows, all on the windows, and you looking at the lights on the street going by as you as your mom or your dad is going this way, and the lights are going that way, and they filter into the reflective uh, part of the water droplets. And you see it walk by. I don't know, for some reason that mesmerized me. I, like, I, I used to always like looking through the water droplets to see the lights passing by. I don't know, just, you know, <laughs> my brain be getting out there sometimes. <laughs> but anyway, guys, I just want to say thank you for coming out. I just want to get that on there, you know, to talk about this new case that I found out about and all this other crazy stuff going on out there. Like, uh, you know, the, 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 the uh, observatory and. The shout out once again, J A Z, whatever your name is. What is it? Unicorn. Yep. J A Z Unicorn. Shout out. Did it. Thumbs up. All right. Anyway, but yeah, I'm gonna get out of here. You know, today was my day off. I was chilling. I'm still working on my novel. You know, just so excited every time I come up with an idea. I got two new books that I came up with. Don't want to talk about that yet. I want to, you know, just want to keep it secret. But I will divulge some. You know, later on in the future. But anyway, I gotta go. I'm going out of here. I'm gonna chill. I'm gonna watch me some Reverie. Whoo! Somebody told me about this show, so I'm gonna check it out. You know, I just want to make sure I get my fans together. You know, with the information that they're gonna be looking at on my channel. Oh, oh, oh! I wanna thank you guys so much for coming out, joining me. So I'm gonna get out of here. I know I keep saying it because I'm just. It's like I love doing this. This is this is my passion. This is what I like. Well, I won't say it's my passion, but this is what I love to do. I love giving you guys information. I love giving you guys the truth. Okay? But first of all, I want to leave you guys with a proverb. One of my very own, as a matter of fact. Which I have about 501 of them, as a matter of fact. And to prove it, I'm going to prove it to you. Look at that. Probably can't see it. Uh, there we go. See all that? All that stuff right there? These are all mine. I came up with those. I know it looks kind of weird because you can't see it. But yeah, there you go. Oh, there you go. See? All those. I wrote all that. You know? Because, you know, when you're on Facebook and they have those little colored screens, you know, when you're on your phone, you can type on it and do all that other stuff. I don't know if you can do that on a computer, but, you know, I have to see. I don't know, but I'll check it out. It'd be pretty cool if I could do it on there, too. I would host. Okay, cool. That's what's up. But... I did want to try and leave you guys with a little something, something. Let me see. Uh, I want to do something that is a little worthwhile. This is be something that I can say because this has got a lot to do with what I, what I be talking about on my channel. This is my very own right here. All right, starts off like this. What we know to be the truth is only because we only know what we are told, taught, or shown. Now think about it. Having an experience with something they don't want known causes them to act the way they do. I think we've received the answer, the truth, because of that. If they trying to hide it, that means whatever you saw with your own two eyes, because I told you, your eyes will never lie to you. Because that's what they are made to do. That's what they were created for. For you to see. Okay? Even see through stuff. And when I say see through stuff, you see through the veil that covers up the truth. Okay? 
the unknown truth, the unknown knowledge, all that stuff. So, like I said, if any any of you YouTubers out there have an experience where you happen to be looking up in the sky and all of a sudden what you thought was a star just happened to start moving and then it curls up and shoots up into the darkness and disappears in, into space, you just saw something of the unknown. You just saw a UFO. So, with that being said, like what I said on there, if you saw that with your own two eyes, that is the same exact thing that they're trying to cover up and act like it was something else. Like a water balloon or it was a sunspot um, fireball or some bull crap that they be trying to come up with to keep you away from getting too close to the truth. That's what that was. It was the truth. Always remember that. Whatever you saw with your own two eyes without the help of anything else. Like say weed or alcohol. Well the weed opens you up anyway. It causes your mind to see stuff that you never saw before so you kind of freak out. But some people may not because they may enjoy stuff like that. You know, you're learning about things that are that are that are of the unknown. I love learning about that. You know, but I go deep. I don't talk I don't try to look about look at the stuff that we already know about. I wanna know about the stuff that we don't know about. So I dig and 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 try to find something that that didn't make no sense whatsoever. But I kept thinking about it and I kept reading it. I kept searching about it. And then all of a sudden, it started to click. It started to make sense. So that's what I do. And I give it to you, my friends. Now, if you've been in some of my comment sections for the, uh, the video about the woman who disappeared in the National Park, you know, Brown Mountain, not someone who disappeared, but went there and had a really crazy experience in Brown Mountain National Park. In the comment section, I have posted some information about things that would explain how all this happens but it's explained in a way that you're not logically used to that's the problem being logically used to information that describes what happened in the cases like this people disappear in national parks you know you gotta watch out for that that stuff that you're learning is the unknown uh, no is the false knowledge what I'm giving you is the unknown knowledge. Like, if I have a moment where I open up and I start speaking my mind about certain things, I don't hold back on anything because I know stuff that most people don't know. And I bring it out little by little, piece by piece, because it's all part of a puzzle that has to be solved. It's a part of the big answer. Everything that's happening right now is a part of the big answer. Okay? People vanishing in national parks. The talk of wormholes seem to be sucking people in them and bringing them to another level of the earth. And when I say level, I mean parallel earth. You know, the ones that vanish without a trace and are never seen again? Like um, Stacey Ayers or um, Dennis Martin and a couple of other people. Like, oh... The guy who they claim wrote that story about the man who disappeared in the middle of a field and his whole family, including the mayor, saw him vanish without a trace was made by some guy, um, Ambrose Bierce. Okay, now his story is just as weird because he they say he wrote small stories, but I know for a fact that the one about the farmer who disappeared in the field was actually true. It happened in Alabama. Now, I know a lot of you probably going to say, where's your proof? Uh, if, if you find the information, let me know. I want to read about it. Sometimes there are information that they won't put out there. But if they do, they're going to turn it into a small story. Like what I just said about that guy, Ambrose Spears. Think about it. If you're talking about something that we already know about that is a mystery, like a mystery, like people who vanish in national parks or wormholes, you know. And then all of a sudden, this guy's talking about it. And he puts it in a small, short story that, he, that is posted in the newspaper he obviously got that idea from something I'm not saying that a person is not smart enough or imagine, imaginative enough to come up with that idea but if it's too close or similar to all of the unknown stuff that we already know about like wormholes and these like portals opening up that shoots people to another dimension and all this stuff when you say something like that in a story it makes me think that obviously you knew that this story was true, but you wanted to get the credit for it, so you wrote it 
as in, as a short story and posted it in the newspaper. These ideas had to come with something. Even with the whole werewolf movie. You know, the very first one back in the early 30s. You know. I have seen photos of upright walking creatures that look like werewolves. They're like the one I have on my on one of my intros where you see this little light brown looking upright dog looking thing that got a long bushy tail walking on his hind legs down the street. And it is it was caught on 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 camera by a CCTV camera. You can't fake stuff like that. Now most people will try to say that you can. Of course you can, but it ain't gonna be nothing like that. I can tell you, because that photo, by it being blurry, that means it is a real photo. See, people, this is the way people mess up at when it comes to these things. When you want to put a picture out there about something mysterious, like a werewolf that was caught on camera, or an alien that you may have caught in a glimpse or something, people always talk about how they need to make sure they get clearer photos and this and that and the other. Okay, first of all, when in a moment like that, when you just see something out of the blue, you ain't got time to stand there and get a strobe light and get a whole crew around that person put the makeup on the alien just to make it look good for the camera. That's not how that works. This is real life situation where you walking in the woods, right? All of a sudden you see something, you want to get out your phone and take a picture of it. You're going to be moving so fast that you got to just get the picture just so they can see that it's actually real. But it's going to be blurry. It's going to be out of focus. That's because this is a real life event. This ain't no doggone photo shoot. Okay? That's where all this CGI crap be coming from. CGI videos that be on YouTube. Like this one that I keep seeing about that somebody claimed they had a video of a bunch of UFOs flying around in the sky and they look like these transparent, like, they look like tops. You know, but they had all these little rods sticking out of them and they had lights all over the place and they shooting all over the sky. That was the most fakest bullshit I've ever seen in my, behind, in my life. But it's out there. That's what you call fake news. Now, the government will say fake news and try to say the stuff that we see, on the, like the real stuff, like secure team or insane disappearances, talking about the real stuff, the, the stuff that I don't, you know, leave out. That's not fake news, okay? <laughs> That's the truth. What they talking about, what they put out there for us to think is the truth, is the fake news. They just want you, they don't want you to get nowhere near the truth. And the truth is that there is a person that is in charge of the government. That is the ones in control. It's an organization. And I call them the ones in control or the ones that are in control. They're in control of the government. Because think about it. Everybody within this conglomerate of what they call the government, they all have bosses. The president has a boss. The cabinet, he can't say nothing. He can't even fart without them saying yes or no. So what makes that? Okay, that's getting too deep. I don't want to say that. That's, I don't want people to think that I'm trying to bash the president. But I'm just saying there's a lot of things about the world that don't make no sense. But you can't help it because you know something's up, but you just got to say it. Okay, I'm not bashing it. I'm not doing that. That's not what I'm doing. Okay, I just want to clear that. Not what I'm up here to do. And that's not what my channel is about. But I'm just speaking my mind. And it all connects with all this stuff. It goes all the way back to the government. They all have these little organizations that are connected together. And they call it the government. Each one of these people, the top ones, got a boss. And that boss leads to the big boss. The ones in control, which is an organization that you would never see. They're the ones that started this mess. Just like I told you. When I, uh, when I was talking about the Griotta Treaty, that is how all of this started. The UFO abductions, the people disappearing in national parks, it all happened because they signed a treaty with the Greys. The ones I call the dark ones, the ones that do all the crazy stuff when it comes to abductions and everything, or not leaving people where they're supposed to leave them at, or bringing them back to where they were supposed to bring them, and they don't come back the same way. One guy looked like his whole face got burned off. One guy had all this radiation bubbles all on his body. It was crazy. You know, and he was abducted. But these are the dark ones. The other ones are the ones that come here to help you. They, try, they talk about how you're destroying your planet and all that stuff. But anyway, the whole point is they signed a treaty 
with these dark ones. They didn't know they were dark, the dark ones, but they, by the time they found out, it was too late. So they had to keep doing what they were doing because they gave them the technology to do. That's what they wanted. They wanted money and power. And this happened ages ago when the whole when the whole government thing first started. Okay. They gave him the technology and used it to their advantage, and now we're here with all this stuff. But this, all of this, is nothing but an illusion. Okay? We need to see the real reality. And that's the one that they're trying to keep from us. That's what I've been trying to say. All this stuff that they're trying to act like is the truth ain't the truth, it's the actual lie. That's why I said lies that are disguised as truths. Okay? You know, you got a lie right here. Then they sprinkle a truth on it that they want you to have, that you want, that they want you to believe. So that's what you believe. But what it is, you got a lie on top of the truth. That's what it is. You got truths that are disguised as lies. That's what we know. Because it's a program that they put together a long time ago. Because every single person on this planet was born right into it. And that's how the, that's how the program started. They created this reality before anybody was to realize that's what it was. You know, and that reality is everything that we know about on this planet. You know, as far as what we do, what we say, where we go to, you know, to go to work, all that stuff. All this stuff is an illusion that they put together. So, so uh, one person is born; they're born right into it. They don't even have to put nothing in their brain. You're born into a reality they created, and it's a very elaborate one too. Because it started with the men who built America. That's how the re, uh, you know the reality started. See, the reality is basically a world that they create to make it look like it's a reality, which would be a world where we got to be uh, covered by a government. Right? We need a president and all these other people. Okay? We need doctors. We need uh, hospitals. We need schools. First of all, they're the ones that created all this stuff. Okay, so don't you think if they are already covering up stuff and creating lies to make something sound like it's a truth? That's how all this started. With the schools that have all this information that they put out there for us to learn. They created all that. So we have to start realizing that we are living in a reality that they created for us. And we were born right into it. So we were sucking into it. We didn't know. I didn't find out until what, maybe two years ago, and then it just I just started finding even more and more information. It made me to realize that that's what this is all about. Everything that's happened, people who disappear in the national parks, all that stuff. It all starts with the Griotta Tree. At first, with that part, but everything else came from a reality that they created for us to be born into. Anyway. Sorry about the ramble, guys, but I had to get that out because, you know, I'm here to give you guys the truth. And if you don't believe me, okay, that's fine. I, I understand. You know, you have your beliefs. I have mine. But I just wanted to share. You know, that's what I'm here for. I'm here to give you guys the truth. Post all this information about, you know, national park disappearances and everything. And I will do that as always. So, you know, that's how I do. But anyway, guys, once again, I know I said it before, but I'm saying it now. I'm about to get off of here. I'm about to enjoy the rest of my night because I got to be to work tomorrow. I only had one day off. I worked on my off day because I huh, had to get that money. But anyway, I'm going to end it the way I always do. And you know how that is. You know how I do it every single time at the end of every single video. It starts off like this. Aloha. Mahalo. And ahui ho. Peace out, brother. And peace out, Wahine. Peace.